Hey guys, it's Clay on the trail. Thank you for coming along and make sure you watch this video before you purchase or make an ammo can stove. I am going to tell you the pluses and negatives about each of these stoves that I've built and one that I've purchased. Uh, help you make an educated decision before you spend money on one of your own. So a little bit about me, if you haven't watched my channel before and you're just checking this out because you're looking to make it an ammo can stove, I camp, hike, uh, fish, do all that kind of outdoor stuff uh, year round. I live in Wyoming. It is January right now. We're having unseasonably warm weather. It's, we generally have a January thaw and it's about 40 degrees, but I have camped at 20 plus below and I've camped at 80 degrees plus, everything in between. So. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and let's talk about these stoves. The first stove I want to focus on is a commercially made sheet metal stove. It is a steel stove. It's not titanium. I have had this stove for 20 plus years, and my dad had it for probably 10 before that. It packs up in a bundle about four inches tall, you know, I don't know what this is, 16 and then maybe 24 long, something like that. It has a table that attaches to the side of it. This is where I got all my stove pipe from that I'm using on my other stoves, is from this stove. So first of all, let's talk about the pluses of a stove like this. Um, you don't have to make it, you can just purchase it. That can be a plus or a minus, depending on who you are and what your abilities are. They fold up fairly small. If you're gonna stick this in a toboggan, you know, pack it on a horse. They have a very roomy, put some light on the subject here, uh, burn area. They come with conveniences. This has a table that it clips like it clips underneath and then these attach it to the top so you have a work surface to work on. There's another uh, water tank you can purchase for the other side. I don't own those because they're just fairly expensive. Um, so you have a supply of hot water all the time and they're just, they're pre-made, they're ready to go, they're easy to pack. This has been in the mountains on horseback a lot of times. Hunting camps, fishing trips, you name it. And to change gears, Let's talk about the negatives of it. Well, for one, it is made of a bunch of piano hinge and sheet metal. And when you heat sheet metal up and get it really, really hot, it warps. So once you burn this one time, folding it back together, sometimes it's not really all that fun. It can be very difficult to assemble. Um, and I've washed my hands pretty good, but just putting it together, I'm covered in rust and dirt and, and who knows what all that's been on this. I have not used this stove for probably 10 years. It's a good stove. You can get it really hot, but it will tend to glow and become a fire hazard. There's not really any mass to it, which, you know, is this a positive or a negative? It's lighter. But because it's lighter, made of lighter material, it doesn't hold heat very well. So once your fire goes out, fire's out. There's no heat coming off this anymore. These things cool off incredibly fast. They also, because they're all hinged, it's full of holes. So it has the one air adjustment, but all of this has air in it. Down here has air in it. Up here has air in it. All the way around, all... Um, six, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. All twelve sides of this thing have air coming through it, so it's very, very hard to regulate your fire. I haven't purchased one of these in a really, really long time, so I don't know how expensive they are to compare them. Um, this is not a titanium version. I have seen titanium versions going between four and five hundred dollars be much lighter but I would assume you're going to run into a lot of the same issues as far as mass warpage I'm not really sure if titanium warps or not so I really shouldn't you know 
not talking about titanium stoves. I'm just talking about steel stoves, but I would guarantee this would be a couple hundred dollars to purchase one of these. All right, my second stove I'm going to focus on is a 20 millimeter rocket ammo can. I purchased this from a surplus store in Shelly, Idaho. I don't live anywhere near Shelly, Idaho, but I have uh, my both of my daughters do, so I'm up there frequently visiting, and they have an awesome, awesome surplus store. Matter of fact, all of these cans, except for my smallest one, were purchased there. Um, like $25, $30. Uh, there are several across the Wasatch Front in the Salt Lake area, Provo area. These are way more expensive than these other stores. So I really like, I really like that store. So what do I like about this? Burns three and a half to four, depending on how full you can get it. I've gotten five hours of burn out of this. So if you're sleeping eight, nine hours, or you're you know stuck in your tent eight, nine hours a day during the winter time with no light and it's freezing cold outside, I only have to stock this thing once. You're gonna wake up once in the middle of the night and stock it. Kept my tent 80 plus degrees. Like I had to keep the doors unzipped. It was so hot. And once I got, once I got it figured out and adjusted the airflow with it, I did way better with it. I really, I mean, I really, really love this stove. This is my go-to stove of the ones I've built. It's big. And I consider that a plus. With that in mind, though, let's talk about the drawbacks to it. It's big. So if you have a small nylon, sill nylon, whatever, poly material, um, two person, one person, hot tent, well, this is not the stove for you. It is so big, you'd have to put it in the middle of the tent, there'd be nowhere to camp. You'd have to sleep outside, which defeats the purpose of having a hot tent. Um, you going to pack this on a horse? Ah, yeah, I could get this packed on a horse. I pack it on my sled when I'm skiing or snowshoeing? Sure. Backpack? No. No, for sure not. Um, it is a heavy gauge steel, so it holds the heat in. That's I forgot to say that on the good side. Once this thing goes out, even when it goes out, you still get heat off of it for an hour because it is, it's actually made of metal. It's heavy duty. This is my, you know, this is my go-to, my go-to stove, the one that I love the most. Next, I'd like to talk about my 40 millimeter ammo can stove. This is the one that when I was setting them all aside before I made them, I said, oh man, this is my stove. This is the one I'm going to love. You know, too small, too big, just right. And I do get a good three hour burn time out of this stove, but I just, it has enough features of it that I just don't like it. They make an ammo can that is exactly this stove, almost this size. Uh, I was just at my surplus store last weekend. They only had one and it was dented to death and the handles were all broken on it. So I didn't end up buying it. I wish they would have had one because it would be a little bit of a compromise between the medium stove and the large stove. What do I like about this? It's a good size. If you have a solo tent, one person tent, you can put this stove in here. You're still going to get three hour burn times. You'll have to stoke it, you know, two times during the night. Not, not the end of the world. It's made out of metal. It's heavy. So you get a little mass on it. Even after the fire dies down a little bit, it still produces heat. Well, let's talk negatives on this stove. I showed this on the making of it video. One of the reasons I don't like this stove is the way the handles are made on it. In order to get any side of any type of clearance for the door, I had to cut this handle away. And in order to cut that handle away, this handle is what holds the top on. And if you touch that, and heaven forbid this thing gets flaring up and you have to grab it to move it, get it out of your tent so you don't burn all your equipment down. Well, I hope the top doesn't fall off because this thing's gonna be 
red hot. Oh, goodness, see, I can't even, I can't even put it together. This is not the stove to have in an emergency. If you had to get this thing out of your tent, you would dump all the coals out of it. You'd burn your, your sleeping bag down. You'd burn everything down in the process. I like to have, as you can see on this, I've kept the handles on it. I don't know if we'll be able to see back here, but I have kept the handles on all these tents. I carry a pair of heavy leather gloves, and if I need to grab a hold of this thing and get it out of my tent, I've got a handle here and a handle back there, but yeah, I just hate the thought. If I had to move this and the top fell off and I dumped the fire out in the middle of my tent, I hate the thought of it. Now, sure, I could weld on this, maybe attach a handle, some sort of lever to lock it down a little bit. It's just more work. And I like that stove so much more, I'm not gonna put any more into this one. But it is a great smaller stove, medium-sized stove. You still get some burn time out of it. Uh, not backpackable, horse packable, sure. Sled, easy. My, you know, my snowmobile, I could haul any of these on a sled on my snowmobile. None of that would be an issue. Okay, last and really least, this little 50 caliber ammo box. Little cutie that I made. The very first, first one I made. Got all excited. I was going to make it catalytic, sort of heat out of it. Anything's so stupid little. I burn time in this thing's like an hour hour and a half so if you're gonna sleep eight hours you're gonna put wood in this thing right before you go to bed and you're gonna wake up every hour keeping it filled chances of you sleeping through and it going out and you have to wake up and start completely over are pretty substantial nowhere to put a front handle on it didn't really love that i could have welded something on here but again that thing is so little the burn chamber in this thing is just teeny. Will it get hot? You bet it'll get hot. Will it heat your tent up? You bet it'll heat your tent up. If a uh, guy was ice fishing or doing something, just stay hiking, whatever, you set it a tent up and wanted to carry a stove and a tent with you to stay warm during the day where you're going to be awake and, and can feed it, great little stove. I just think they're too small. If you're going to take the temperature of your tent and heat it up, go to bed, let it die down, and then stoke it up again in the morning, you know, size comparison, this might be the, the stove for you. It's got a good surface on it. You could cook on it. Uh, you're just not going to keep your tent hot all night long with it. Now, I don't know that I really went pluses and minuses in the right order or any sort of order on this last one. I just, it's too little for me and I don't like it. It's sturdy. It's actually made out of metal. Again, once it goes out, it'll hold heat for a little while, but there just isn't much of the stove to put out heat in comparison to these other ones. Now, this is all my opinion. You may have built a stove out of one of these ammo cans I said was crap, and you think it's the greatest thing ever? Excellent. Stick with it and use it. This is my opinion. Um, I have not camped with either of these two stoves, but I have set a, I have a hot tan. I've set it up in my front yard and spent hours in them, keeping it warm, seeing if I could keep it warm. This one struggles to heat up any serious square footage, so if you have a real small tent, one like this might be the way to go, and you're just going to have to bring your zero-degree bag and a bivy or whatever and let it go out and then light it up in the morning, and, you know, it'll condensate and rain all over you, and when that's over, get out and get moving. These other two stoves, even the third stove, will run all night long with minimal effort. So that is uh, my opinion on all these stoves. Again, winter camping to me is one of the greatest times of year to camp. You're generally, you know, there's not many people out. There's no bugs. Um, the sound that carries on a cold, cold night 
when everything's covered in snow, you know, trees with fresh snow on them. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Don't use excuses. Oh, I don't have the equipment to winter camp. I can make any of these three stoves for under $50. You'd have to buy the pipe. You'll be in it under $100. Easily under $100. And if you wanted to be creative, you can make rolled tubed stove pipe for cheap. Go to Home Depot, get some sheet steel and there. I've only seen them in, in titanium, but they, they, it's only so wide and they roll it up this way. And then when you go to use it, you roll it up the other way and it's like nine feet long and they use steel rings. You slide four or five of them on it. And dude, they would be so easy to pack and so easy to, so easy to use. So don't be afraid to get out in the winter time. I did bring up titanium stoves in the kind of the beginning of this video. Will I ever own one? I don't know. They're like, seriously, 450, 500 bucks plus stovepipe. Uh, way lighter to carry, of course, way lighter to carry. Cost difference versus light. I always say no, and then you try on some super light rain jacket that's five times as expensive as a regular rain jacket, and I buy it because it's four ounces instead of a pound. So I can't say that I would never own one. In the near future, no. No, I have a pretty good collection of stoves. I had a ton of fun building these things, guys. If you like to build things and you're a little frugal or cheap or whatever you want to call yourself, ammo can stoves are, they totally have a place. They're not hard to build, minimal welding skills. And if you can't weld, get a pop rivet gun. You can pop rivet these things together. Hinges, you know, cut out some, you know, every hardware store has some little sheets of flat steel. You can cut out all the parts and pieces for them. You could put one of these together easily um, with very minimal tools. So here is my two cents on hot tent stoves or wall tent stoves or whatever you want to call them. Don't be afraid to try something new. If you haven't been winter camping, give it a try. It's awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming along. This was a short kind of impromptu video. I thought after I've had a little bit of knowledge on building and using all of these different stoves that I would share that before you go out and spend your money and then decide, oh man, this one's too big. This one's too small. This one, you know, I don't like it the way it hold, folds together. It, I can't control the air in them. All those kind of problems. The one Stove that I would stay away from sh for sure is the 40 millimeter rocket box unless you can figure out a better way to make the door to put wood in and not screw with the handle. Uh, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, like, video, help support my channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Feel free to share and adventure on, folks.